So here we go. Here's a here's the new start. Hey, welcome to Wednesday night. It's the live show, and you are here, and it is great. And this is going to be a fun night. We got content. We're going to talk about uh, questions from Instagram on kitchen design. We're going to have a we got a quiz on the move. We got some kitchens of Instagram that we're going to look at, and we are going to get into the content. Uh, oh, and we got a quiz. We're going to look at a quiz, and then we're going to do a new segment called "Ask Me Anything," and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, a lot of people in the chat already saying hi. It looks like we've already been here, but uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. So, let's get into Instagram Live for a minute, and hopefully, there'll be no sound on Instagram Live, um, and that way, uh, no one gets gets any f bombs dropped on them or uh, unpleasant sounds of music so we're gonna i'm gonna share my screen we'll get into this and we'll look at some instagram lives and hopefully there'll be no sound let me know real fast if there is and i'll hopefully get this uh fixed up for us here's the first one we're gonna look at and uh, let me just go here and mute this and then i'll mute that all right just get into this here I don't know if you can hear that. It looks like the sounds are off. Look right there, sounds off. So, uh, hey, let me know, and uh, then we can we we can uh, fix that. But uh, this kitchen here, open shelves. I don't mind those. Oh, that's like a wine little wine fridge in the side. Nice little table. Uh, I want to go back though because I want to look at. Let's keep. Oh, here we go. Kitchens of Insta. Yeah, more posts. Come on, people. Here we go. Kitchens of Instagram. We're gonna look at the reels. All right. I'm going to skip the ones that I already looked at, but uh, hey, let's go to this one right here. Bam. Sound is off, right? No sound. Jackie saying, all right, thumbs up for me. Okay. Beautiful fridge, paneled fridge. Really nice. I'm not into the super dark wood panels like that, but that looks pretty cool. Um, unless you just are forgetful and you don't know where your fridge is. This does make me feel good. All right, on, good for you. I'd have no patience for that. Yeah, I guess so. Make my 100K appliances look like an old burn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let's do a comment. I'm gonna add a comment for just for us for from the MTKD community. Uh, I'm gonna put in uh, TMB's comment, which is paneled fridge is gorgeous. All right, you guys are in charge of the comments for Instagram. I cannot type very good. There we go. I just commented live on Instagram. There it is right there. Look at that. All right, let's go to the next one. That's fun. That's what we're going to do. All right, my favorite hardware by Amarok. From, okay, Amarok. Amarok is a very old, or well, not, yeah, they are very old, uh, hardware company and um, and still current, but they, they, they've been in the hardware game for a long, long time. Back in the 90s, um, I remember, um, or I guess the early 2000s, they, they, you'd go on this website and find discontinued Amarok hardware. It was really cool. So this is beautiful golden champagne hardware available on rtakb.com. Um, and it takes time to clean them and the doors behind them. Yes, it does. Okay. Seems like they should be bigger, but nice. I think they're the perfect, perfect size. These are beautiful. These are beautiful. Uh, you want. <laughs> All right. Post. All right. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to, I'm going to post on all these. All right, let's go to the next. Here we, where we at? Here we go. Okay. Can I get it? There we go. Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Open up to the outside. Lots of open shelving there. See, they got the, the backsplash and then they have the shelf backsplash. Like all one, not one piece, but it's like a, a marble shelf or, or whatever the material is, uh, porcelain or, or quartz. That seems to be a real popular trend these days in the last little while. So. That is a really cool, um, nice, nice pool outside too. Uh, let's see. All the bugs would come in in the house is all I think of. 
all I think of is that pool. No. I'm loving this. <laughs> all right. We love watching whoever that is work. Oh, yes. All right. So some tile work. Love, love. How do you start? Okay. Fire, fire, fire. Heart, heart, heart. Um, what should I comment on this one? Uh, are you for hire? Any backsplash work done, and that would be great. All right, let's go to the next one. A couple more. This is uh, this is lots of fun. Uh, the obsession is real. Take oh wait no, the obsession is real. Tag someone who needs their paper towel uh, hidden. I, I don't know how to tag, but uh, that is a really really nice idea. I like the way. Oh, I like the storage. That's <laughs> that storage is legit. Oh my goodness. Okay, one more. I could do this all night, honestly. <laughs> you probably wouldn't want to watch all night. It'd be pretty pretty boring. Oh, this is a Halloween one? No, too late. Let's see. How we broke up all the white cabinets. By putting in glass door with white behind them. <laughs> Looks nice. Got the pot filler, the range hood. Yeah, okay. I don't know what to say there. What should I reply on this one? Read caption. Oh, how to spice up an all-white kitchen. Look at those little mini shelves next to the range hood. All those. Um, let's see what other people are saying. So, oh, not very many comments. Uh, I don't know what to say because I don't have anything constructive. Um, let's do emojis. I haven't done emojis yet. Let's do star face. And I don't want to do kissy faces. That wouldn't be, that'd be kind of weird. <laughs> let's, do, let's do the puke emoji. <laughs> oh my gosh. Should I do that? No, my name's on that. <laughs> I'll just leave the star eyes. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty funny. If I could go with somebody else. All right. <laughs> let's do let's do one more. Oh, I think we've seen this one before. Yeah, okay. So we're back. We're all caught up on, on Instagram. Um so that's great. All right. So much fun. So much fun. All right, we're done. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me for that rocky intro and the restart and just looking on Instagram. I think it's fun just to catch up. It is a great place to go to get ideas and to get inspiration. Um you know, it's it's uh, it's always good to to do that as our blogs. So, what's the poll saying? Uh, not too bad, actually. Do you do you read kitchen blogs? Yes, thirty two percent so far. No, forty five percent. And I have, but not frequently, twenty three percent. So, still no is kind of in the lead. But if you can combine yes and I have, actually, that would be uh, tilt tilt in the scale. So, interesting. Um, I'm not a huge blog reader, but uh, every now and then I, I look at blogs for inspiration. And then Karen mentioned way up in the chats, does it count if all you do is um, look at the pictures? And I'd say yes. If you just look at the pictures, that definitely counts uh, for blogs. So so there you go. Um, all Always good. Now we're going to take a little quiz tonight. I did not take this quiz. Um, and hopefully I'll get the answer without having to put my email in. But I will. Put my email in if I have to. And uh, this is uh, how stuff works. This is the ultimate kitchen design quiz. I'm going to throw this up on my screen. And um, we'll go from there. Make sure you hit the like button on the way in. Please do that. What are we after likes? We're at 19 likes. So last week we, we tipped the scales. We had like 50 some. Um, so it'd be nice to, to do that again. Hit the like button. Definitely helps out the video. Somehow I don't really even know how, but. It's good for my ego. <laughs> uh, all right, this this picture is blurry. It's not just you or my screen. It is actually the picture. Um, so let me have a sip of tea. 
All right, here we go. The ultimate <clears throat> kitchen design quiz. Uh, and um, you can uh, you can take this quiz too. How stuff works. All right, the, the kitchen design has come a long way over the years. Yes. Uh, have you kept abreast of all the options and techniques of modern kitchen design? No, I've, we're not keeping abreast of any of the options. <coughs> oh my goodness. Take our quiz and see what kind of designs you can cook up. Pun intended. All right, start the quiz. Okay. What is the big advantage of spending money on a kitchen renovation? It is more pleasant to spend time preparing food in a modern kitchen. Having a modern kitchen equipped with Energy Star Earth friendly appliances will save money. A modern kitchen can increase the resale value of your home significantly. So I have to pick one of these. What would be the big advantage of spending money on a kitchen renovation? Uh, let's go modern kitchen, more pleasant to prepare food in. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that one. <laughs> oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> okay, I didn't know I could get it wrong. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, I got it wrong. It's, it's That's not the answer. It, it's the resale value. Oh, now, now I have to make sure I get these right. Okay, one of the most valued features home buyers look for, I hope you can see that if it's not too small, um, is a kitchen renovation, make you stand out among similar properties, and it will increase the value of home by by up to 150% of the renovation cost. Okay, pressure's on. Tobin, you got to get these right. Oh, according to some experts, the kitchen is the room where the heart is, memories are made, people spend most time. Ugh. I know the answer is people spend most time. However, my answer is memories are made because that's where memories are made in my home. So that's what I'm going to put. It's going to be wrong. Oh, I got it right. <laughs> the kitchen is a room where memories are made. The kitchen is considered the hotspot activity in any home. Woo, woo. I got one right. Well, it's only two. I'm 50% so far. All right. I see you guys are voting, but you all got that one wrong. <laughs> I thought it was going to be wrong, too. Actually, I thought you guys were right. Um, okay. Let's do the next, the next one. All right. What is the first step in designing a kitchen renovation? <gasps> I do this for a living. I should know the answer, but let's go. Assess your needs, measure the space available, hire a kitchen design consultant. Ah, oh, gosh, I don't know. <clears throat> Come on, Mark, think about this. You, 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 this is your thing. Assess your needs. Yes, obviously, you need to assess your needs. You should measure measure the space available. Yes, you got to do that. Hire a kitchen design consultant. The first step. You should hire a kitchen design consultant. A, B, and then C, Karen says. Assess your needs. See, a kitchen a, a kitchen design consultant will help you. Will they'll measure your space and they'll they'll also help you assess your needs. I'm committing. Ah, oh, dirt. Ah, oh, I failed. I failed at life. Ah. Oh. Assess your needs. Before you do anything, spend or spend money, start by assessing your needs and wants. You will want to determine what you like about your current kitchen and what you dislike. Well, of course, yes. I mean, that's I, even I say that, obviously. Yeah, I can't call MTKD. That's what you should do, but it was on the list. That would be that would be C, hire a design consultant. That that's what I am. I'm a kitchen design consultant. That sounds much more professional. All right. I'm not doing great. What is a good way to get ideas for your kitchen design and appliance choices? Go to your local library and look through books in the reference section. I'm picking that one. I don't care what the answer is. That's what I'm going with. Attend weekend open houses to see firsthand what is popular for kitchens. Visit a kitchen design center or building center that offers kitchen packages. We are going to the library and we're going to go to that reference section and we're going to look in the books. Oh, man, I got it wrong. No, you should visit a kitchen design center or building center that offers kitchen design packages. Of course, because then you can go see what kitchens look like and all the options and you can pull out things and look at how things are holding up to many, many pedestrians moving things around and how beat up they get. Or you could go to your local library 
and go to the reference section. All right. What is the, I love this quiz. I'm just going to tell you right now. This is great. What is the crucial decision in the initial kitchen planning process? Let me, let me, yeah, let's just have a sip of tea. You guys let me know what you think. What is the crucial decision in the initial kitchen planning process? Mm. All right. Decide on your, on the appliances you want. <clears throat> yeah. Decide whether existing kitchen floor space is adequate. Yes. Design on your kit. Uh, decide on your kitchen budget. Jackie saying budget. Karen saying budget. All right. Budget, budget, budget. Um, yeah. I mean, that's going to make sense. So if it's not budget, I'm going to be quite surprised. So let's go budget. Yes, of course. You should decide how much you can budget in your new kitchen. Uh, easier for everyone involved in the project. Yeah. If you know how much you got to spend, you're going to have a much easier time throughout the whole process. So yeah, start with your budget and then you'll know that you can't afford those appliances. Your research is finished. Okay. And you know what you would and you know what you would like for a kitchen design, what is your next step? Hmm. You need to decide which appliances will be built in. Now is the time to hire a kitchen design professional. That's me. You'll want to decide whether you will include an island or a breakfast nook. Your research is finished. You've been to the library. You've been to the research reference section of the library and you've researched this. And now it's time to find out what your next step is. It's time to hire a professional. Yes, once you have an idea you will want and need, it's time to hire the pro, man. You got to hire a pro. Design A kitchen design pro will ask many questions to help you create a kitchen design that will keep you on budget. Call MTKD. That's what you have to do. All right, let's go to the next one. All right. Where can you shave costs when your kitchen choices put you over budget? <laughs> Downgrade from luxury surfacing materials, a.k.a. countertops, or maybe flooring. Cut back on the design and installation costs. Never cut back on your installation costs or your design costs. That's not good. Downgrade your cabinet, your choice of cabinetry. Um... I'm going to go with surf. Oh, goodness. This is tough. You should never cut back on your installation. You, you definitely need, you, you should almost 100% of the time get this installed unless you are really good at this or it's a DIY project and it's, you should still get it installed. Downgrade your choice of cabinetry. That sucks. I don't want to do that. Downgrade from luxury surfacing materials. I'm going to go with it. Oh, yeah, I got it right. The best place to start trimming costs is to downgrade your choice of items like countertops. It can be easily upgraded later. You'll want to get the design and layout right the first time, and major changes are costly after the job is finished. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Kelly's saying luxury is a clue, Mark. It, it, yeah, obviously, right? Luxury, trying to shave costs. All right, thanks, but I'm not that smart. All right, what is an essential task for your professional kitchen designer? Ooh, okay, here we go. I should, I should have went through this long ago. Your kitchen professional is responsible to supervise the installation of your kitchen from design to completion. That was my job beforehand. Um, yes, your kitchen professional will design your kitchen after you make your appliance choices. No, that's not. We can do that before. Your kitchen professional will translate your lifestyle into design solutions tailored to the way you live. Hi, hi, hi. Um, like yes. Oh, this is not good for me. Um. Okay, so in my current like job, not my current job. In my old job, when I was doing this in the industry, hands on, it was a. I would supervise the whole thing, start to finish, handle it all. So I'm going to say that. However, if it's they're just a designer, then they translate your lifestyle into design solutions tailored to the way you live. Everyone's saying, see, if I get this one wrong, it's going to be your fault. 
Yeah, we did it. You did it. I was going to go with one. Uh, all right. Your kitchen professional should ask you many questions about your lifestyle. Then translate your lifestyle into design solutions tailored to fit nicely with the way you live. I'm going to start using that 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 um, language, I guess, uh, when I'm talking to clients from now on. Let me translate your lifestyle. What is considered a standard measurement of kitchen layout efficiency? <laughs> this time to prepare a standardized meal. That's I'm thinking that's what it is. Total work, triangle distance, travel time from entry. When you enter the kitchen, the total travel time. What's that mean? Um, total work. Okay, obviously it's B, but. I think the better answer is time to prepare a standardized meal. What, what, by the way, is a standardized meal? <laughs> you let's just go with it. Oh, I was wrong. All right. It's the works. It's the triangle. Okay. Um, for more than 50 years, the measurement of kitchen layout efficiency has been referred to as the work triangle efficiency experts track the average homemaker steps and discover that they, it, there is a natural triangle between refrigerator the stove and the sink. Who knew? I just want to get a standardized meal. I don't need to know geometry. In an efficient kitchen, what should the total distance of the work triangle be between the sink and the stove and the, and the refrigerator? Oh my gosh, I'm supposed to know this as a design professional. Um, okay, all right, think, Mark, think. Okay, come on, you know this, it's B. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Listen, I promise I know what I'm doing, okay? But come on, nobody knows that <laughs> except for Kelly. <laughs> the legs of the work triangle in your kitchen uh, do not have to be equal lengths. However, most efficient kitchens will have a total distance between 12 and 23 or 18 and 27. It's a little bit relative because that's, that's, you know, anyway, let's move on. Let's forget that happened. <laughs> What is the miss? The minimum recommended clearance between an island and any other counter or uh, or appliance. Uh, if it's a two person kitchen, it's four feet. All right, I do know something. Okay, I just redeemed myself from the triangle kitchen uh, question. Oh, there goes my camera. It's punishing me. All right. Okay, we got that one. We knew that one. A good kitchen design should include. <coughs> excuse me, more than one microwave station. Definitely, you should have two or three microwave stations, a pantry for storage of cans and bottles, and ample space next to stove and refrigerator, ample counter space. Yes, we went with that one. Uh, um, and I would argue that you should have pantry storage for cans and bottles, if you can. Uh, but you definitely need to have a landing area. Landing area is very important. So that, that kind of trumps everything else. And more than one microwave is ridiculous. Even one microwave is, you know. What's the big, this is a long quiz, but we're going to go with it. What's the biggest factor that influences your kitchen design options? Length and width, shape and size, door and window openings. Oh my gosh. Um, what's the biggest factor that in influences your kitchen design options? Well, door and window openings definitely affect shape and size, Shape and size, length and width. They seem to be uh, the same. All right, we're going with you guys. I'm not failing this one. Everyone's saying C. And I have to agree, it's C. Because you, you, you know, you got to deal with those. They're, they're, and sort of all the above. Everyone's saying C. This is on you. I'm not even looking. Oh, no. <laughs> what happened? We got it wrong? Your kitchen design is limited by the shape and size of the room. Well, yes, where your kitchen is located. There are differing strategies for design to accommodate the shape and size. I don't know. I disagree. I mean, I agree. I agree with all of these. They're all important. Oh, anyway, next week, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to change my channel. <laughs> oh, don't blame Kelly. <laughs> I'm going to change my channel into something else. I'll start talking about some, some other things because I, I, I guess I, I don't know much about this. No matter what the layout, which essential, which 
essential should be central in a kitchen? Let's say that 10 times fast. Which essential should be central in a kitchen? Refrigerator, sink, or stove? Oh my gosh. No one's ever going to hire me if they watch this because I... I'm getting these all wrong. No matter what the layout, which essential should be central in a kitchen? A refrigerator, a sink, and a stove. Okay, refrigerator is the most used appliance by everyone in the home. That should be uh, central for everybody in the home, right? Like anybody can, everybody uses the refrigerator. The sink, probably the second most thing that everybody uses. And the stove, not everybody uses, only the person cooking. So... Hmm. We, 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 let's see. Sink, sink, sink. Everyone's saying the sink. Okay. You guys want sink? You're going to get it. But just, just let it be known. This is on you. I knew you had that one. I think it is. <laughs> your sink is used more than any other appliance. No, it's not. Um, it's not. It's not used more than the fridge. Listen, if you're, if you're eight, you're probably... You know, and you can't reach the taps. You, you, but you can open the fridge. Anyway, make sure your sink is central or according to how stuff works. What room configuration determines that a U-shaped kitchen is the best layout? A kitchen space that is square or almost square. A kitchen space that is roughly U-shaped. <laughs> a kitchen space that forms a rectangle. Oh, my goodness. Um... I wash my hands, but I go to the fridge more often than I wash my hands. I have no idea. The U-shaped kitchen is best if your kitchen is roughly U-shaped. Well, no. Oh my gosh. What do you guys think of that one? I just totally guessed. <laughs> I don't know. Why would you want a U-shaped kitchen anyway? It, no offense if you have a U-shaped kitchen, by the way. But um, what about an l shape with an island? That'd be cool. All right. Let's keep going. Oh, my goodness. This keeps on. I don't even know when the end of this is going to be. An L-shaped. I hope you're enjoying this okay. I'm having fun with this quiz. And um, I hope you're enjoying watching. An L-shaped kitchen layout is well-suited to, to a rectangle-shaped kitchen room. Well-suited to a room with many windows on one wall. Well suited to a large room. Well, it's well suited to a rectangular room, or well suited to a room with many windows on one wall. Uh, <laughs> the L-shaped layout is ideal for a large room where you can have additional counter space at the open. Uh, okay, yes, but it's also well suited for a rectangular room. Okay, people, all right. A G-shaped kitchen. You know when the last time I did a G-shaped kitchen was? Let's see. Never. Never. I've never done a G-shaped kitchen. You plan a kitchen laid out in a G-shape, and the cooktop is going to be located on the peninsula between the kitchen and the family room. What is a safe way to set up the cooktop? Well, don't put it in the peninsula. Design a kitchen so that the cooktop area has a divider that stretches from floor to ceiling. Install a 10-inch fireproof tempered glass shield between the cooktop and the family room wall. That's what I'm picking. And uh, I designed the area so that the cooktop is at least six inches below the, the, the ledge separating the rooms. This is unbelievable. When in the world are you designing a G-shaped kitchen? Exactly. What is a G-shaped kitchen? It is a kitchen layout shape. There's an L shape and a U shape and a C shape and a G shape, which is ridiculous. I'm going to put a fireproof tempered glass, 10 inches of fireproof tempered glass between my people and me. And forget about that it's in red. That's what we're going with. So no one's ever going to bother with that kind of kitchen. If you have a very small space for your kitchen, what is the best design choice? Single wall, corridor, or L shape? A very small space would be single wall. Yes, because it's a very small space and you don't have room, obviously, to move. You have cabinets everywhere. So, <laughs> I 
<laughs> I love Helen's comment. There is good. That's good. I swear the quiz designer was taking hallucinogens. <laughs> I love this quiz. It's great. What kind of kitchen design is ideal for today's fast paced lifestyle? Go for a kitchen design that includes a microwave, dishwasher, and a breakfast nook. Kitchen design that incorporates a computer workstation and a desk space, or a kitchen design that incorporates an eat in eat in area. Okay, it's fast paced. Fast paced. So I think you want a microwave because um, that's fast, right? Am I, am I correct in saying that? No, I'm not. You want something that has an e something that incorporates eat in because that's faster than a microwave. Because you have takeout and it's a fast paced lifestyle. All right. What kind of kitchen island design is currently in vogue? A freestanding look, matching the counters, matching the cabinets. Uh, freestanding look at islands. Uh, I just totally guessed. The new trend is to be freestanding with a mix of colors and materials. That's, I mean, that's right. I mean, it's nice to have an island with legs, something a little different, um, different color, whatnot. <laughs> there's my there's my score i got 11 out of 20 better luck next time mtkd on your uh your life choice of being a kitchen designer uh good for you but you failed uh well it's still a pass i got 11 out of 20 um all right so there you go if you're looking for a kitchen design solution and you're looking for someone who's got an 11 out of 20 on this random quiz from How Stuff Works on Kitchen Design, check out the link in the description below where you can learn how we can work together to design your next project. And I'll, I promise I'll give you a much better kitchen than an 11 out of 20, but there's no guarantees. So um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I do better. Um, Oh, 11 out of 20 is not a pass. Yeah, it is. 10 out of 20 would be uh, like 50%, right? What's 11 out of 20? Just multiply 11. It's 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 a, it's a 55. Unless 60 is a pass. What's the pass? I don't know. I don't know, Jackie, but I'm saying 50 is a pass. And so I got, I got a 55. Pass with a D, yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for your patience. And uh, I'm super embarrassed that I failed that quiz. Anyways, that's what you get when you try to do things live on the internet, Mark. <laughs> without, without, uh, oh, I just, I think I just posted it. I just posted it to Facebook somehow. I don't even know how I did that. Oh, I hit share on Facebook. I just shared that on Facebook by accident. So good luck, everyone. You can go check that out on Facebook. Take it yourself now that you know all the answers. It's not going to be very fair. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I failed. But it's all good. How's our poll doing? We're going to jump into the... Uh, to the... To the, uh, the quiz is dumb. I, I kind of like the quiz. It's not a valid quiz. No, it isn't a valid quiz. Um, 70 is a pass in the U.S.? They give us Canadians... They, they really give us Canadians a pass then because uh, it's 50%. I mean, not in like university, but, you know, regular school. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll drink that. The quiz was so poorly worded that a lot of us got confused. You and me both. But uh, anyway. That was fun. I am live on Facebook. Yes. Live on Facebook, live on Instagram or not live on Instagram. This is YouTube. We were looking at Instagram. Um, do you read kitchen design blogs? Yes. 28%. No, 52%. And I have, but not frequently. So most people aren't reading blogs these days. And most people are probably not going to the library, getting reference material to find out anything about kitchen design. But that would make an interesting video if I went there and did that. So at least I got a really cool video idea about that. And speaking of cool video ideas, coming up on a Saturday, before I jump into this, uh, my video is about toxic countertops and the health hazards associated with the most popular forms of countertops that we are putting in our homes. Um, it's a really interesting video, and I hope you check in check into that on Saturday coming up. 
um, it should be good. And I share the website where I get all the material, all the information from. It's really interesting. All right. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I don't know if I trust my skills anymore <laughs> after that one. There's a good, that's, that's true. Go, oh, sorry. Not that, I mean, that's probably true too, Karen. Sorry. Uh, no, that's not what I'm meant to do either. I'm sorry. These comments I got confused on. Google is a new library because you believe everything you read. Yeah, of course. Oh, Mark, I need your help figuring out what length should a pole be on a 36 inch drawer. I was trying to get ideas. Like it sort of depends. Uh, 96 mil is good, but might be a little small on a 36. If you're just putting one in the center, if you're putting two on either side, which I don't recommend because you're always pulling on one side and not the other and it wears out the hardware unevenly. So if you're putting it in the center, maybe 128 mil, which is just a little bit bigger. So either 96 millimeters or 128 millimeters uh, would be the largest I'd go personally because I'm not just a fan of really long poles not because I don't like to look at them necessarily, but if you're ever going to replace them, it's it's a little more challenging to find longer poles um, that you like and that, you, that have availability than it is 128 mil or 96 mil. So that would be the ones I'd go with on a 36 inch drawer. All right, let's get into this. And the rule of thirds, the rule I don't know if I trust the rule of thirds on for hardware. Uh, cause you'd have all different size hardware then. Um, so a rule of thirds is a good interior design rule. I don't know if it really applies to handles personally, but you can try it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I understand. I understand. All right, let's go. This is, these are um, the internet's questions. I just go online like I did last week. I got some kitchen design questions. So I found some more kitchen questions. Uh, questions that you should be asking your kitchen designer. And I'm going to answer those. I'm a failing kitchen designer who's going to answer these common questions you should ask, ans ask your kitchen designer. Starting with this one, what are the most... And this is basically just to help us open up a conversation and we can chat about some of these things. And that's why I like th these questions. So uh, the first one is what are the popular kitchen design trends? And of course this changes from year to year. And the question is a lot of people have is, uh, you know, we say it here all the time is don't worry about trends and don't, don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Get what you like, uh, get what you want. But I would say, um, trends, if you are interested in trends and you want to go that way, uh, I, I'd say over the range right now and having uh, ventilation hoods and, and, and that kind of whole area is probably a trendy area. And we're getting moving more and more away from chimney style uh, vent hoods. We're moving more and more uh, into the, um, you know, those, those kind of boxed in uh, vent hoods that either match or don't match your, your kitchen. And then just the whole facade behind the range, that seems to be the most um, trendy area, I guess, of the kitchen. The other area that's pretty trendy still is the sink and the types of sinks. Um, you know, and I, I don't know what the most trendy sink is these days, but I know something that is trending are the the apron front sinks that are that are matching marble or matching quartz or matching material to the countertop. Those seem to be a pretty trending uh, idea in sinks. Boss and Bob saying the workstation sink, of course, that's pretty trendy and pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I like those. <clears throat> and the other thing uh, with the sink is especially, well, this only applies to an apron sink generally is to have a drip ledge uh, installed underneath that sink. That seems to be something that's popping up more and more. And usually you can use a countertop material for that, but I've seen other material, uh, whether matching or unmatching. Um, you know, as far as the standard ones, like the, you know, the open shelves and all those kind of things, the, uh, the pot fillers, um, those things are always going to be like somewhat, somewhat still trendy. Like open shelves are, are still actually very trendy. We see that we all, we see them in almost every kitchens of Instagram um, that we look at. So, you know, love them or hate them. And most people either do love them or hate them. Um, 
they're they're still actually trendy um and in in the pot filler that seems to be something that's that's very still trendy we see those a lot in these pictures but of course you know uh, get what you like don't worry about trends but if you want it to put some of those things in those would be the trendy things in my opinion now you know maybe there's other stuff i'm missing but um yeah that's uh that's my my thought on trends now let's go to the next one which features make a kitchen with timeless style? Um, interesting. You just asked about trends, and now you're asking about timeless style. <laughs> so what do you want? You got to go to the library, okay? Just get to the library, get to that reference section. Which features make a kitchen with timeless style? Uh, oh, another thing that's trendy. Let's go back to the trend question. Sorry. The other thing is trendy, and I mentioned it when I looked. I, I think I mentioned it on the Instagram it thing there uh is the 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 backsplash that comes up about 12 inches or 15 inches of matching material and then the the, the shelf um you know i guess it's an open shelf but it's it's the matching material to the countertop so marble or coarse or porcelain um that that seems to be trendy right now so I'm getting asked about that and some designs that i've done and i'm seeing it a lot on some of these uh pictures so Okay. We, you know what? And here, sorry, I'm going back to this one for a second because Jackie just said uh, waterfall edge on an island is trendy. And yeah, it is still trendy. We see a lot of that still. Um, and that, that's true. So, but, so, so when do these things uh, become, become timeless, I guess? When do, when do these trends become timeless? Um, well, I, I don't know what the timeless kitchen design styles are or the features. Here's the thing. <laughs> I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit funny now. Uh, a sink, a stove, and a fridge are timeless designs. Are features? They're features in a kitchen. They're timeless. You gotta have those. Uh, you know, other than that, timeless. White is timeless. Unfortunately, sorry, but it just really is. Um, and other than that, what features? What do you guys think? What features are timeless? Help me out in the comments. I have no idea what makes a timeless kitchen. I'm saying like, I'm thinking like white kitchens are timeless. Um, what else? Like are apron sinks timeless or are they more just trendy? I'm stumped. <laughs> Jackie says a lazy Susan. <laughs> okay. Okay, so they're a good point. My granny has hers for the last 50 years. Well, you can't go wrong with that. Oh, yeah, Paul saying uh, the style like Victorian or colonial is timeless. But but is it timeless or is that still trendy? You know, because some people love that trend. Oh, let's see. Oh, Winston says lots of light. Okay, I'll go with that. It's not something you'd normally think about when you're thinking about timeless features in a kitchen, but I think that is a very good one. Lots of light is timeless. What about open shelves that run on only one side of a cabinet run? Would this throw off the balance? For me, it would, because I am, I just like seeing symmetry in wall, wall cabinets. So yeah, like to me, that probably would throw it off, but not like necessarily. It really depends on on the rest of the design. But for me, that would probably throw it off personally. But I don't know. Oh, shaker doors, yeah, shaker doors or flat panel doors seem to be timeless. Hmm. Um. So that's that's yeah. I don't know. Yeah, another another vote on shaker. I think shaker is timeless. Um, I don't think slab high gloss or anything like that is going to be timeless. I really do think, you know, white kitchen shaker doors uh, is 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 a pretty timeless design style. Inset cabinet doors, timeless or trendy? Hmm, could be timeless, maybe. Thanks for being here, Laura. Appreciate you watching. Um, wood flooring, yeah. That's a good one. Timeless. 
That's a that's a pretty interesting question. I'm gonna keep going, but those are those are some good ones. So white shaker, um, <laughs> timeless. Have a sink, a fridge, and a stove. You're good. All right. What's the next one? Would an island be suitable for my space? Okay. Well, obviously I don't know your space, but that brings us to the question: How big is your island? We 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 were looking at that on Instagram, and uh, let me know how big your island is. My island is 27 inches deep by uh, it's less it's a uh, 36 30 and 18 uh which is uh 36 18 and 70 um what's 36 and 36 is that 78 <laughs> 78 i think no it can't be 78 guess six and an eight four 74 i don't do math so um yeah, let me know how big your island is. Is there room for your island, or is would an, that's the question to answer that? Would an island be seventy two? Thanks, Jackie. Um, no, my island's bigger. Than, no, that's that would be um, thirty six and thirty six. I got thirty, thirty six, and eighteen. So um, I think it's seventy eight. How much space? Six and eight is <laughs> that wouldn't be eight. It'd be seventy four. I think it's seventy four. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't have time. I'm trying to do a bunch of other things. I can't add. Thanks. It's 84. That's how big my island is. Yeah, that makes more sense. Seven foot, seven feet. Um, you said to leave 42 inches all around for walking room. You, if in a single person kitchen, yeah, you should have that. 48 inches would be good. So would an island be suitable for my space? And yeah, so... You need to have enough room, 42 inches at least, for people to walk around in. Oh, I sorry, Jack. I said 18, not 13. Um, 30, 36, and 18. I meant to say 18 at least. And in so you need to have walking room around that, and that that then you just figure out if your island's suitable. So that's the question. Ooh, one designer suggested an island between our stove and fireplace less than seven feet of feet apart would have been the skinniest Island ever. They're less than seven feet apart. And you got to put an Island in there. I guess it would be, <laughs> it's be a little sliver, a little sliver of, a, of an Island. Um, okay. Let's go to the next one. What are the best types of material for counters, flooring, etc.? What are the best materials for counters? Well, that's an open ended discussion because you know, would be debating that all day. Um, I would say the best material is going to be something that lasts a long time. It's not going to break your budget. That is, you know, safe to work on. You can cut on. It's not going to scratch or get dented or be, you know, beat up from use, wear and tear. So, and there's a bunch of different options, obviously, out there that fit the bill and would likely be good. So, you know, the best types of material would be stone or, you know, you know, like uh, manufactured stone, you know, or even laminates, they all can be good. But make sure you watch Saturday's video because it has a lot to do with this question, actually, in fact, and I'll spoil it for you right off the get go. Uh, it's porcelain. Flooring, the best material for flooring. Again, lots of different opinions on this. I, I like softer flooring under feet. So I'm not a fan of tiles. Um, I like softer flooring that's warmer. I know you can get in-floor heating and all that stuff, and you can get mesh that goes in tiles that makes it warm. But I like I like wood, wood flooring, uh, personally. And I, I don't know what the best material for et cetera is. That's, you know, could be anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Bob's in hurry for porcelain. Yeah. Yeah. It, I'm telling you, you got to watch. You got to watch that video. On, on Saturday, it's really interesting, uh, the safety issues. Not like, you know, anyway, I don't want to spoil it. It's it's re it's really good. Linoleum is, is, is it, it's a natural product. Linoleum is not natural. No, no, it's, it's like vinyl flooring. Not natural. Hey, Darlene's here. Darlene's in the house with the four thumbs up. Thanks for being here, Darlene. Um, Yeah, give, where are we at? 35 thumbs up. We're doing good. We're doing okay. Not as many on the live stream tonight, but that's all right. It's November 9th. People are doing other things. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world today. Um, so, you know, 
I'm not the only thing going on. Okay, don't drop a sledgehammer on it. No, I've never dropped a sledgehammer on my countertop, ever. What's the next one? How can I make my kitchen more eco-friendly? Well, that depends. Are you talking about economically friendly or ecologically friendly? Because there's different ways to do that. If you're talking about ecologically friendly, well, let's see. You could choose eco-friendly materials like... Um, countertops that can be recycled that have that in the end of their life aren't going to go into a landfill and just become you know chemicals in the ground so picking materials that can be recycled at the end of your use of them is probably a really good idea and then picking materials that were manufactured in such a way that they were a little friendlier to the earth to to manufacture um you know even ikea has products in their kitchen lineup that are recycled material, recycled uh, doors, uh, doors made from recycled material. So they're out there and they're around there. Lots of companies even use recycled material um, for those purposes. Um, Boston Bob's saying Energy Star appliances, which I think is almost every appliance these days. Aren't they all Energy Star by now? You know, you could just turn the lights off and when you're not using it, <laughs> buy a bike. And don't drive everywhere. That would be probably more eco-friendly. Um, so, yeah. Linoleum, as distinct from synthetic versions or vinyl, is made from all natural materials, including wood, flour, rosins, ground limestone, powdered cork, pigments, jute, and linseed oil. Well, there you go, then. A distinct form... A, a, a dis, as distinct from synthetic versions. Oh, okay. I'm only familiar with the synthetic vinyl. Didn't realize there was a an actual all natural version. Thanks for sharing that. That's cool. So yeah. Oh, a composting bin. Yeah, that you can make it. That's a good idea. Composting bin. Uh, in our part of the world, definitely have to have that. LED lighting. Another way you can make it ecologically friendly. Um, yeah, so just using those types of materials. Who knew, right? I didn't know that. <laughs> That's interesting, though. I've, you know, most of the stuff I've ever seen was vinyl. How do y'all feel about mini fridges and refrigerator drawers? Well, if you're trying to be ecologically friendly, I don't know. That's a lot of power, but I like refrigerator drawers a lot because they just seem cool. Um, and I don't mind mini fridges either, like beverage coolers. Those are awesome. All right, let's go to the, what's how many questions I got? One or two left, maybe. I want to increase the resale value of my home. What should I add to my kitchen? That's the last question. Oh, no. Um, if I want to increase the resale value of my home, what should I add to my kitchen? Well, uh, if you are not renovating it, you should try to add as much storage as possible. Can you add um, an island? Maybe that's movable. Can you add new appliances to your new to your home? Can you add paint to the old cruddy cabinets that you have to make them look better? Or add a new countertop? Um, or add some new flooring? So uh, I guess those are the things you could add to increase the resale value of your home. But if you're going to renovate your whole kitchen... Um, then I would say, here's what my take. Maybe this would be something that you could think of. Uh, you want to have as much storage as possible. And of course, it's all dependent on your, your how much space you have. As much storage as possible, as much counter space as you can get. Um, put a wall oven in at waist height so it's very easy to access. Make sure your uh, microwave, if you have one, is, is easy to access. Not too high, not too low. Um, those are all good things. So, you know, maybe add in um, nice pullouts in pantries or in base cabinets. Those are things that will add to the resale value of a home. When, when, some, when someone goes in looking at your home to buy it and they open up the cabinets and they got all nice pullouts, everything's easy to access. It's like, ooh, this is, this is kind of nice. I like this. So those are some things you can add, in my opinion. And, um, you know, nice, you know, like I said, new countertops, stuff like that, I think is all... It's all good stuff. All right, let's go to the next one. Should I consider a more open floor plan? 
Uh, well, that depends. Can you consider a more open floor plan? Uh, if you can open up a wall and get rid of a wall to open up, you know, into a, an open space, definitely. I still think it's the way to go. I love open, open floor plans, uh, but but there is a little bit of a trend into more closed off kitchen. So that's going to be a really personal question. And the answer is not should I, but can you tear the wall down? And do you need to put a beam in? And how much work is going to be involved to do that? So. You know, Matthew's been on before saying that he wanted to do that, but he can't because, you know, obviously the expense of that is going to be quite a bit more than what you want to put into the kitchen. So um, you should consider it. Uh, personally, I like something that's open or what uh, what T is saying here is uh, semi-open. So you could have a pony wall or something like that, which to me is still basically an open concept. If you have something like a pony wall or a half wall, um, it's sort of like having a peninsula in, in, a, in a way. So, um, all right, let's go to the next one. Should I get stock cabinetry or consider custom cabinets? Um, if you, if you can afford custom, go that way because then you can get everything you want, anything, any size, anything at all. There's nothing that's going to hold you back design wise, uh, in your kitchen when you're going with custom cabinets because they're custom. Obviously, that comes with a price tag, and so if the price tag is too high, then you can do a lot with stock cabinetry to make them look custom. I mean, obviously, yes, Ikea is a great example, but what you can do with Ikea, you can do with every stock lineup of cabinets, basically, um, by just being a little bit creative and just using the cabinets in ways that you know enhances the customizability uh, factor of the kitchen to make them look custom. Um, so that that's another thing. And, and of course, with Ikea, you can... And I'm not, you know, I, I, using Ikea because you can do this. There's other companies that make things for Ikea doors and whatnot to uh, to fancy it up. But if you can use stock uh, or uh, custom cabinets, I mean, that's, that's the way to go. So there you go. Interesting question. How much of my budget should I allocate for appliances, flooring, and countertops? Uh, you, should, you should allocate all of your budget to those things. Just that's that's what you need to do. Put all of your budget in there. Um, I think you should have. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out and let me know if you agree or disagree. I think you should have a separate budget for your appliances and a separate budget for your cabinetry and maybe a separate budget for your countertops if they're going to be higher end higher end countertops. Um, and 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 your flooring. I think because there's so many choices within each of those things that to say, you know, you, I think you should just break it up a little bit. To me, that makes a little bit of sense. So my appliance budget is so much. Um, and this is, you know, what I'm, what I'm, that helps me look at the different appliances or go get a bunch of estimates on, on your, on your kitchen. Um, you know, for instance, for countertops, Here's your layout. You got, you know, it's, you need, I don't know, you got 10 by, by 12 and you have nine feet of counter space or something. So go and price that out with a bunch of different types of countertops to see what those price ranges are to, uh, to get an idea of what those budgets are. So budget is a hard one when you're talking about one big number and then trying to like fit all those things in there. It's good to have an idea of each of these things and break up your budget uh, for each of those. I think that's a good way to do it. Um, and then once you, and of course you, you already have this one big number that you don't want to go over and you can start kind of plugging those things in to, to seeing what you can kind of shift around. Um, Cause it's hard to know how much of your budget do you want to allocate to appliances? Cause you can go and get just, run-of-the-mill basic appliances to very high-end appliances, uh, you know, and everywhere in between. So that's my kind of suggestion. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but that's my suggestion. That's the last question. There you go. How do we do? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, good questions from the internet, of course, and the poll is still going. We have 46% saying that they do not read kitchen blogs um so sorry to the kitchen bloggers so i will invite you to go check out michael's blog at kitchen cider 
com and uh, and read some of his articles. Very informative stuff. And if you like looking at pictures, there's pictures on there too, um, because um, we all know that's one of the best best parts of it. Getting inspiration, but there's also good information. And I know Michael writes his own blog, so that makes a world of difference. So check that out. He's awesome, and um, you, you can go do that if you if you feel like it. Of course, hit the like button. I see a lot of that going on. So um, let's just end this off for a few minutes. So for if you're watching and you're wondering what's going on, and you're watching the replay, we had a, a real rocky start to this live stream, which I'm going to cut off as soon as. Uh, this gets processed in in YouTube. And I'm going to cut the rest of this off here the next few minutes. So uh, if, if you're watching this live, stick around for a few minutes. But if you're watching the replay, I want to thank you for being on here. And I hope they have a great week. Check out Saturday's video. Or if this is in the future, I hope you've checked out Saturday's video. It's called Toxic Countertops. And it should be good. Uh, and I appreciate you all.